Localization is obviously the process of localizing or making something more local. And in the political context, this can be used to refer to a number of things. If a specific function is made local or some decision-making power is made at a more local level as opposed to a less local or more centralized level, that could be said to be a form of localization. But as I use it in the political context, I'm referring to something more specific than that and certainly more fundamental. That is the localization of political power of the sovereign. That is we live in the sovereign United States. But if we were to get rid of that central authority and make it at the state or even more local level, that would be real localization. That is taking governments apart from the top down until they get to the community level because a community is a voluntary group or organization where you can have as much or as little government as you want, none at all if you so choose to break off as a community of one or an independent family, homestead, whatever it is that you would like to create. And at that point, it becomes an ethical institution as opposed to an unethical, centralized, violent, authoritative, coercive institution. So, how would that work in the U.S.? Well, as you know, my presidential campaign platform is to take the federal government through a peaceful, orderly, responsible bankruptcy process that leaves us with 50 independent states and up to 562 sovereign native nations. Now, we have the luxury of the subsidiary units of government here in the United States that would make it relatively easy for us to go through this process of localization. Because getting rid of the federal government and getting it down to the state level, letting the states and sovereign tribes be independent is only the first step. And I would hardly in good conscience even suggest that state governments as territorial monopolies on coercion would then be ethical institutions. They would still have all of the ethical challenges that the federal government has of being coercive, centralized, authoritative, and not in accordance with the natural law that says you have a right to create systems based on your values that meet your needs, as long as you're doing it in a voluntary manner. That is, you're not holding anybody captive or forcing your ideas on anyone else. So in the United States, getting rid of the federal government would just be the first step. We would then see the dissolution of states. In fact, most states would be racing against each other to see which can dissolve the fastest to get down to the county level. And at the county level, we might just be done here in the sense that government there will be at least close enough to communities that it will be competitive between counties and that individuals will be able to break away, communities will be able to break off and form new sovereigns. In some counties, obviously there are some very large ones in this country that would need to be further broken down. And in those cases you would see perhaps independent city-states develop or communities with their own territory break off and become sovereign. And at that point, when the individual or a family on a homestead has its right, your right respected, to claim your own sovereignty, to not be forced into a system that you don't want to be a part of, to declare your independence, the most American thing you can do, we might be at the state of voluntarism where it is no longer necessary to further this process of localization. So how would we transition essential functions to the local level? And what we see as possible in getting rid of the federal government really sees, uh, shows how easy it is to do so. Uh, Department of Transportation, for example, because you know, government has taken a monopoly on, uh, quasi-monopoly on road, road building, of course, I built a road to my own property when uh, I bought a piece of land that didn't connect to any existing roads. But the 50 states already have their own departments of transportation. So to cut up the federal department of transportation into 50 plus apportioned pieces and to simply hand over authority to those local governments would be a relatively easy administrative task. Certain institutions that shouldn't exist can simply go away. 
the IRS, for example, states already have their own tax collection agencies. If there is no federal government, the functions of the IRS, which I would like to see uh, ended entirely anyway, because taxation is theft, at least when you don't have the option of opting out as you would at a local voluntary government kind of level. Uh, th those agencies simply go away, get dissolved, and one of the greatest benefits of going through this process of localization in a conscientious, deliberate manner, as opposed to a haphazard collapse as the alternative, is that we get to claim our stuff back as individuals. We get to take back everything that's been stolen from us, and that's a critical part of my platform, that we would be returning the liquidated assets of the federal government as directly as possible to we the people. So. This probably is begging the question, for those of you who haven't heard the term before, what is voluntarism? Well, voluntarism is really the heart of libertarianism, the belief in freedom, because freedom is what you have when no one is forcing their will on you. And if that's the case, it means that all of your interactions with other people are voluntary, that is, free of force, fraud, or coercion. And this is an ideal state of society where individual rights are respected, where ethics are observed. And if anything, humanity is already going in this direction. We live in the most peaceful times in human history. You are less likely today than ever before to experience violence at the hands of another human being. And this is the result of a clear, ongoing historical trend that goes back as far as we can see in human history. So what does a world of voluntary localized government look like? Well, the things that would need to be handled at a geographic level for a community, perhaps fire protection services, public safety, if they want in that community would be handled locally and in accordance with the needs and values of those communities. There are other things that government has taken on as functions, such as Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, that amount to insurance or retirement plans. Some of those things could be globalized. And this gets to the challenge of globalization versus localization. Of course, I would say it really doesn't matter which way we go as long as it's voluntary. The problem with having global government is that it is fundamentally coercive. It is not voluntary. It's saying that everybody in the world has to be forced into a certain system. Now, perhaps medical insurance, perhaps retirement should be practiced or conducted by uh, global institutions, international institutions, so to speak, corporations, companies, public trusts, private trusts, whatever the economic mechanism may be, there are going to be certain things that people want handled at the global scale, that people want to come together by choice voluntarily with people outside of their geographic regions. At the local level, what you have is so beautiful and incredible that it really challenges the current paradigm of statism and makes you wonder, why, why don't we have this? Why can't we have this? Well, we can. And it's really exciting to see this as the trend, localization of you know Brexit, the, the Scottish independence vote, Catalonia, uh, the Great Republic of Texas, Vermont, New Hampshire, California with CalExit now, Alaska, Hawaii, all vibrant independence movements that I think we can credit to a generation raised with the internet coming into power saying, oh, we don't have to do things the way they've always been done just because they've always been done that way. If we want to redraw all the lines on the map, we will. So with whatever government you're experiencing at the local level, you are going to have much more power to change it. And if for some reason there is an institution, perhaps a city state, that is maintaining a geographic monopoly, it would be relatively easy to secede or to opt out in such a situation. If you want to create a new community, if you want to go out somewhere, there's unoccupied land and start a new city with a whole new concept, you will have the freedom and resources available to do that in a way that we don't have today. Imagine millennials having the freedom to say, no, nope, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to create a new society, a new city, a new community, because we know we are capable of better than what we have today. Why do I call this the everybody gets what they want strategy? Well, quite simply, because this is the best way for everybody to get what they want. Right now, if you're a liberal and you see a conservative on the street, 
you kind of have to see each other as enemies because you are being forced into a centralized system where one of you is going to win and the other is going to lose and something is going to be forced on everybody, although it's usually not the will of the majority or the winners. And I hope you see that there's an ethical problem with this concept that the majority can force its will on the minority. But in reality, it's the people who control the forcing process, the special interests, the politicians, the profiteers of big government who benefit from this. Now, with just the federal government gone, a liberal can meet a conservative on the street and say, well, you, you live in a liberal state, you live in a conservative state, I hope that's going well for you. We can be united in American values of respect for freedom without being forced under a centralized government. So everybody gets what they want when they have the freedom to express their will at a level of government where they truly have the power to opt out, where governments have to compete for your business in order to keep their power over you. And it's not really a power over you at that point because now your will is respected, even if that will says, you know what, I'm out of here. I don't want to be a part of the system anymore. So everybody gets what they want when everybody has the freedom at the local level to determine what they are going to experience, if anything at all, in the name of government. And that's why localization is the everybody gets what they want strategy. Adam versus the man is made possible by people who care about freedom, like our Patreon supporters whose monthly contributions get them perks and exclusive content. Find out how you can help by going to patreon.com slash Adam versus the man.